Hi, I'm Jack Grody with Vanmark. In this video, we are going to review how to remove, take apart, assemble, and reinstall the rolls in your peeler scrubber washer. To start, we will go over how to remove a roll from your machine. First, always make sure the machine is properly de-energized and locked out before beginning any maintenance activity. Open the peeler side doors, open the upper doors and prop them open with the attached rod, and then open the discharge end door to gain access to the rolls. Next, remove the bolts connecting the splash guard to the discharge end of the machine. You will do this on both sides. Grab a splash guard near the center and tip the unbolted end towards the center of the machine and slide it forward to disengage the guide pens on the other side. Repeat this on both sides of the machine. Please note that the splash guards are different and can only be assembled one way. Removing the roll can be done with a single person, but it can be simpler with two people. At the discharge end, remove the uppermost bearing hold down by removing the single bolt in the hold down block and set it aside. From the side of the machine, support the roll at the center with both hands and lift the discharge end of the roll to disengage the bearing from the bearing block. Once the bearing is raised, push the roll towards the discharge end to disengage the driven end from the square drive coupling. Sometimes, twisting or rocking the roll can help to release it from the drive end. Repeat this process for each of the rolls, working from the uppermost down each side to the last roll in the bottom center of the peeler bed. Next, we are going to show you how to take apart a roll. Once the rolls are removed, remove the bearing by loosening the set screws and lifting it off the shaft. Fix the square end of the shaft to prevent the roll from rotating. Using the provided socket wrench, loosen and remove the hold down nut located behind the bearing. Remove the shaft from the roll, pulling from the driven square end and set it aside. Please use care when handling the shafts to avoid damage. Remove the polymer end fixtures from inside the ends of the roll and set them aside. Clean all components and inspect them for unusual wear or damage. Refer to your equipment manual for spare parts information. A cart or rack can be helpful to store and transport peeling rolls to the maintenance area for disassembly. Note that having a full set of spare rolls and shafts on hand allows you to remove and replace the rolls immediately, which will reduce the machine's downtime. Next, we will go over how to reassemble a roll. Position the new roll on a stable surface such as a cart or workbench. For brushes, please make sure to note that one end has a series of colored stripes to identify the driven end of the brush. This is important. If the brush is installed incorrectly, the machine will not perform as designed. For sine wave rolls, make sure the proper direction and alignment is followed as described in the equipment manual. First, install one end fixture into the driven end of the roll. A light coat of food grade grease on the outer diameter of the end fixture can help with installation. Ensure the keys inside the roll are aligned with the notches on the end fixture and it's properly seated over the keys. Insert the round end of the shaft into the driven end of the roll through the center of the end fixture. Make sure with brushes that the shaft is inserted into the end with the colored stripes. As the shaft is inserted, align the square shaft with the square opening of the end fixture. Continue to slide the shaft through until the washer at the square end is flush with the end fixture. Install the second end fixture on the non-driven end, passing the round end of the shaft through the center of the end fixture. Install the locking nut by hand onto the shaft threads. With the square end of the shaft fixed, tighten the nut using the supplied socket wrench. It is critical to properly tighten the nut correctly and not to over tighten it. Tighten the nut until one to two full threads are visible beyond the nut, and the torque should exceed 35 foot pounds. If three or more threads are visible, with 35 foot pounds or less, the nut requires replacement. Over tightening the nut can cause product damage, product loss, or damage to the machine. When the nut is properly tightened, it will eliminate any play in the ends of the shafts between the end fixtures and the tube. Apply a light coat of food grade grease to the round bearing surface of the shaft. Slide the bearing onto the shaft with the lip seal side first, but do not tighten any set screws yet. The roll is now ready to be installed into the machine. The last step is to reinstall the rolls into your machine. Once the rolls are assembled, refer to the roll setup chart in the equipment manual and your records. 
different products or seasonal changes can affect the ideal roll setup. Placing each roll in the correct position is important to achieve optimum performance. Begin with the lowest rolls near the center of the machine and work outwards, up both sides of the peeler bed. For brushes, make sure the driven end with square shaft shows the colored stripes on the brush. If not, the brush may be installed backwards on the shaft and needs to be reversed. Similarly, with sine wave rolls, ensure their orientation is correct with the direction name stamped on the ends. Refer to the equipment manual for more detail. From the side of the machine, support the roll with both hands and direct the bearing end of the roll through the discharge end of the machine. Then, swing the driven end into the machine and align the square drive with the square coupling. Guide the square shaft end into the coupling with a rocking motion until it is fully seated. Do not use excessive force. Firm hand pressure is sufficient. Rest the bearing end on the bearing block gently. At the bearing end, ensure the bearing is properly oriented with the lip seal aimed towards the roll. Lift the bearing end of the shaft slightly and align the button on the bearing housing with the lubrication hole in the bearing block. Install the bolt, lock washer, and washer into the hold down block and place the block over the bearings, aligning the bolt with the bolt hole in the bearing block. Tighten the bolt finger tight and ensure it is not cross-threaded. Ensure the hold down block is oriented properly with the flange towards the inside of the machine. Repeat this until all rolls and hold downs are installed. Tighten the bolt in the hold down block until snug with a firm clamping pressure on the bearings. Do not over tighten the hold down bolt or deforming of the cap will occur. Next, tighten the set screws. Reinstall the splash guards in the same fashion they were disassembled and close all machine doors to make it ready for production. If you have any questions regarding this process, refer to your equipment manual or contact us at Vanmark.